And we are back, folks. Another edition of the Michigan Football Film Study. <laughs> Focus on the offense with Al Boyd. Just this is where we get into the X's and O's. We get we dissect the plays. I like this part, Sam. I like this part. Yeah, like like no place else. You won't get this yeah. any place else. And because of that, because of that, we hope that you go uh, over to YouTube or you're on YouTube. We hope that you go over and you like the video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, to make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get a notification every time you put up a new video. It'll continue to grow the channel. The way you can really show love is go over to MichiganInsider.com. That's where you show love, Sam. Yeah, man, one dollar gets you in your first month. That's where your football, basketball, recruiting, analysis, insight, intel, that's where it all goes down. I'm going to be coming with some more hardball, you know, coaching, head coaching, rumors, NFL stuff. And I come with another installment of that today, so don't miss that. One dollar gets you in your first month over at MichiganInsider.com because we don't put any sponsorship on this video. No monetization of this video. Why, you ask? Because we don't own the footage. I mentioned we don't that. Own it, we don't own it. <laughs> I mentioned that at the beginning and the end of every one of these videos. So let the copyright owners know we are not misusing your content. We are strictly no using it for the entertainment, the edification, and the and education, education of you to people, right? So with that, Al Borges. Sam, it's just because we want him to know. We just want him we do. to know. Because uh, this one was hard to do. Like, oh. We didn't love oh. you to people. I, oh. I wouldn't participate in this one. Oh, I puked all over my computer a couple times when I was watching this game. It just wasn't good. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was hard to get through. Uh, but it started out. So we'll we'll start out on a on a good note. How about that? How about we yeah. put, how about we put a good taste in people's mouths out of the gate? And Michigan came out with an inside run. Now this was we didn't talk about inside running as one of the keys to the game. Matter of fact, we talked about attacking the edges being where the vulnerability lies. Michigan saw something on film, said we can bust these guys up inside. And while that wasn't necessarily the case throughout the game on the first play al borges it absolutely this was out the gate sam now take a look at this sam they're in quarters coverage this is a little different now they had this this was in their in the, on their menu but it wasn't a, a thing they featured a lot uh against the big 12 teams but they ran it the whole game against michigan and you could see that's just gorgeous they get the uh the double team on the nose guard the lead block through. Oh, this this is a great view, and you can see uh, Schumacher coming through in that linebacker double team to the backside linebacker. Oh, the picture he makes a mi safety miss. Now it's a foot race, and that is how you start a football game. Simple old school football, Sam. ISO ran this play in high school, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, we ran the ISO. Hey, that was a play. We're going to run the ISO. Every oh. offense in America had an ISO. Oh, yeah, back in the old days, ain't no question. And it's just a matter of, of trying to isolate that linebacker and put that fullback on him and just run opposite wherever he blocks that dude. Sometimes he'll take it on with his inside arm, and you'll go opposite that. This time he took it on with his inside arm, boom, you saw where it was. Sometimes he'll take it on with his outside arm, try to spill it to a safety, and you may go around him. But one way or the other, you're going to isolate that block and run opposite however he decides to play that block. Yeah, if he could have bent that inside out, Borges, uh, you know, the guy had an angle on him. And, you know, Donovan's mm -hmm. fast. They have some, I will say this, they have maybe a little bit more speed on the back end than uh, than a lot of teams they, they face. Didn't stop them from getting run by in the pass game because they were so nosy and trying to stop Michigan's run, and Michigan made them pay. But they, yeah, they had to. Yeah, they had to. And that's why we, I, we want, I want to show that first clip for not just the offense. I wanted you to, everybody to see how they kind of changed the back end of their, their coverage just for Michigan. And in the first play of the game, that's an indicator of 20 times they played some form of 40 coverage. All right. So, Al, then it gets to the point where you're in a goal line situation. You are at the two yard line, and it is fourth. Down. It, is, it is fourth and two, Al Borges. 
And uh, yeah, um, Philly special. Philly special. Sam, if it hits, you're a genius. Now, come on now. If it hits, you're a genius. But there's certain things that you just can't anticipate, especially when you're calling plays. This is a Philly special. Now, those are they're in quarters coverage again. They're basically doubling. Who is that? Luke? That's Luke, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Luke's job is to try and get that corner out of there and then collect that safety so the whole flank is bare. You understand, Sam? Mm -hmm. He's going to try and take two of them out of there if he can. Now, that's he'd rather it was man-to-man because -man nobody covers a quarterback in man-to-man, -man, right? But if it isn't man-to-man, -man, that don't mean the play's dead. You still got a chance, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what Luke's doing. He's trying to get them out. Now, short motion by Ronnie, who's going to take the handoff, and then he's going to pitch it back to Colston Loveland. And in, in the in the meantime, after JJ hands the ball off, he's going to be casual for a beat. He's going, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing. And then all of a sudden, sneak on what is in essence kind of a rail route, if that makes any sense. Okay, uh, hoping that that corner has been has vacated that area, and Loveland can just flip him a little pass. Right? It's that simple. That, that's all there is to it. Now, this is what the running back running back. Blocked in behind the point man. But that's not what you do on Philly Special, okay? On Philly Special, this is what he should have done, is blocked the end man on the line of scrimmage, okay? That way it secures Loveland the opportunity to see and make that throw and give him a run pass option. So Philly Special gets thrown about nine out of ten times. But every so often, that cornerback sees the quarterback go and ascends and allows the guy with the ball to run the ball in the end zone. But he's not going to be able to do that unless he has someone in front as an escort. In this case, he just didn't have that. Yeah. So uh, he should have taken the ball, simply just tossed it over the end line, and the end of that, okay? But you can see that play is not designed for number 13 to be on Loveland that fast. End zone view gives you a great look. They did a little telestrating for us. But you can see that end man redirects right to Loveland, who never really even gets a chance to throw the ball. But what would have happened, Sam, possibly, okay, let's just say possibly, possibly, is had that man been sealed, the, the Loveland could have taken that ball. That guy chose to go cover J.J. he just take off. But a lot of times he'll see what's up, and he'll come up, and you just flip it over his head. So, um, it happens. Yeah, it happens. yeah it's, it's a tough one. It it's is. Happened, I mean. Absolute tough one. Uh, but, hey, you know, it's still early in the game. Oh, yeah. Right? No, that's, that's, it's, a, it's a blow. And, and there's a case for kicking a field goal there. To fourth and two, great drive. There's a case for kicking a field goal there. But they chose to go for it, and that's, you know, and they had a play they liked that they ran and they felt had a great chance to work. It didn't, and that's play calling. That's the way it is sometimes, is you look like a really, really smart guy, which had that play hit, everybody did the right thing. You'd see all this maize and blue jumping up and down. What a genius these guys are. Or it doesn't hit, and when you miss a trick play, Sam, you're not dumb. you a complete fool, okay? You go <laughs> into another dimension of idiocy when you when a trick play doesn't work. <laughs> Why would you run that play? Well, never mind. I get, I've seen that run 15 times from 15 different teams, and it worked. But I'm the idiot. Well, it sounds like uh, you're having flashbacks to well, I'm having, oh, I've, had, I've had a few. I and Sam, you set me up. You knew. I knew you're going to do this. <laughs> but <laughs> every so often, I get to relive the horror, the horrible plays of my Michigan career. I, I'd rather relive the, the great ones like that. You know, Notre Dame game where we threw the ball at the end there and won the game and all that. But we had, uh, as soon as this happened, I didn't notice it right away. I didn't notice it right away. But then after they showed the replay, I said, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Someone wasn't sealing the edge. And I remember in my second year, we're playing Notre Dame in South Bend. We ran a halfback pass where we pitched the ball to Vince Smith and slipped Dilio to the corner, who was basically uncovered on the play. But what happened is, is for some reason, and I don't know why, 
It was miscommunicated up front as to who was supposed to pull in front of Vince, and nobody pulled. Vince got the ball, and all of a sudden, uh, Tao, their linebacker, was on him so fast. Just It reminded me of what was happening to Colston, that he threw it, and they intercepted the ball. And uh, when people ask you about it later, you don't, like, they don't, they're not going to say, I can say whatever I want now because I'm not coach anymore. But uh, even today, I won't tell you who the mistake, who made the mistake of the play. I won't do it. But uh, sometimes the best laid plans uh, just Game situations, things happen in it that are hard to account for. Maybe the play would have been thrown over the guy's head. I don't know. But I know that play and the play I called had no chance of success based on the initial execution. So you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, and it, you could still say that that was the worst call you've ever seen in your life. And you're right, because we didn't. <laughs> yeah, when it doesn't work, that's, that's <laughs> kind of how it picks out, right? When it doesn't no, no, work. Trick, trick, Tom, uh, Sam, remember now, if you if, if a trick play doesn't work, it's like another play not working on steroids, okay? Because you are not dumb. You are a complete fool. <laughs> You're trying to get You're getting too cute. cute. Yeah, getting too cute. To get cute. <laughs> <laughs> to get too cute. I never tried to get cute in my life. I have tried to deceive dudes at times, but cute never entered my mind. That, I, I hear that all the time. Other coaches I hear say, don't try and get cute. I go, cute. Uh, you know, um, but we thought that that was okay early in the game it's an early mistake you move on yeah heck yeah and this, happens. Game. and this happens Al board just as the um first pick six of the game happens right yeah and this is all this is this is a growing experience for the quarterback i mean he won't do this again he knows he'll he'll figure it out i'm telling you and this is nothing more than a uh, drive route by the bottom of the screen with the two tight ends and a speed out by the slot okay uh, a speed out is a 10 yard out where the receiver runs out of the break. There's no plant. He's not trying to fool anybody, Sam. He's saying that guy's off enough where we're going to beat him with timing on the throw. As soon as he comes out of that break, he should catch that ball on his third step out of the break. You with me? Mm -hmm. That equals for the quarterback because the timing has to be finite, right? Perfect. That equals a three step. Plant throw. What's a plant throw? That means when his right foot hits the ground, he kind of rocks and throws the ball right at the outside hip of the receiver. Does he lead him? No, he doesn't lead him because the receiver hasn't gained enough ground to run down a ball way in front of him. Understand? So when J.J. took the drop, he took three steps and he hitch-stepped. Now, initially, the funnel is right down the field because you don't want that dude to see – where you're going with the ball, right? So your your wings are straight down the field, just like you see. You look like you could be throwing a drive route right side, right? Or you could be throwing the drive route side. Now, but when that right foot hits the ground, now your eyes go into that throwing lane to make sure that apex defender doesn't get underneath it, which he doesn't. He doesn't get underneath it, okay? But you hit that right foot, okay? You hit that right foot, drop that shoulder. But see that little hitch step? That little hit step, that little collecting of his feet allows the defense to close three to five yards. Every time you take that step, the defense can move three to five yards, depending on how good they are. The good guys can move five yards. The lesser guys can move maybe three yards. But that step, that, that economy of movement, that or lack of thereof, is critical. Because if you watch the play, it seems so makes, what's that? I said it seems so little. Oh, it does, but passing game is a little, little lot of details, Sam. Yep. As soon as you take that hitch, boom, you can see the problem. You can see the problem. Here's the deal, Sam. That ball hit that defender's hands on the fifth step by the wide receiver out of the break, and it needed to hit him in the hands on the third step, okay? If you watch the play, when he makes the break, there is enough separation to complete this pass if it's thrown with good timing. Yeah, that is uh, that is one of those. What did you say? Is the is learning the hard way? Oh yeah, that this was that every shit. step count. You told me every, every step, step count. counts. Every step the quarterback count makes. I learned this from Bill Walsh back in 1979. He says your economy of movement 
must be finite. No step that isn't incorporated into the timing of the route can be taken. You understand? Three-step plant throw, three-step pitch throw, three-step push, push, reset throw. Everything you do is tied in to the distance to the route and the timing of the throw. Yeah, it's a tough one. But, uh, you know, you, you got to believe that that particular mistake is one that you very, very low likelihood of being repeated after, after having something like that happen. Now, thing is, you hope it doesn't discourage him, like because Devin had a traumatic experience with a with with Lookie somewhere along the line, and never ever wanted to throw a Lookie again in life. You hope yeah. th this is that kind of traumatic experience for JJ. Yeah, I don't think that happened with me. I think it happened before he got to me, but it had a it had a it had a scarring effect. Okay, what happens? This is the problem with square outs, and I learned this with Joe Montana, watching Joe play and listening to him. He threw an interception back in '87 against the Vikings on a square out, same route, same pattern. And he didn't hitch it. He threw it on time. The guy just jumped it, but it was to his left. And he was trying to time it so good. He didn't look to the last second and the guy jumped in front of it. He threw it a little bit behind him like that. And he did, but that can have a lasting effect where you're going, Oh God, I don't know if I want to throw a square out again because the, the sting is really hard. I mean, it's not just an interception. It's an interception for a touchdown and quarterbacks tend to remember that. All right, let's get back. Uh, on the ground and a quad, your first quad pin. I think this is the first quad pin and pull of the game. It is. It is. For, the quad pin and pull. We, we saw this one on video, right, Sam? Remember Baylor did that, did had some success with it? All right. Let's 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 go back and look. Uh, well, we'll see this from the end zone. All right. Before we start, Sam, pause it a second. Let's talk about what is a run through. Because I just, I don't think people really know what a run through. A run through as opposed to a blitz. Okay. Hell, this could be a blitz. I don't know, but I think it's a run through. A run through means that the linebacker identifies the blocking scheme and sees separation and a gap that allows him to run through and keep the play from getting started. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That is triggered once the ball snap and the play is identified. A blitz, on the other hand, is triggered instantly when the ball snapped this might be a blitz i don't know but uh i tend to think it's a run through okay so now we know what a run through is all right let's look at the scheme okay on this play on this play the uh wing back and the tight end there's your run through linebacker that's the dude that's going to raise all the hell okay the spotlight guy the tight ends are going to block that five technique back to the inside linebacker who's running through. You understand? Mm -hmm. But when the inside linebacker disappears, it's their job to go backer to backer. You understand? Uh -huh. So he ignores that, assuming that's handled, and takes the next linebacker. Okay? So he ends up blocking the linebacker, inside linebacker to the left of your screen. The right tackle pulls and blocks the first man to the outside, and the running back leads on the inside safety. Okay? So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the right guard has what we call an if. If means if that linebacker runs through, I got him. Block him through or around, depend on what he does, okay? If he comes through, I'll get him. I'll stop and get him. If he goes around, I'll wrap around and get him. I'll pull and get him, right? But it's all based on my ability to eyeball him from the get-go, okay? What happened on this is we took our eyes off him just a beat. Here comes a motion. And he ran through before we could get back to pick him off. You can see he sees the problem. Yeah, you saw Zinner turn around, kind of re realized right away. Oh, shoot. That's what you call run and read, Sam. Run and read. That means you're pulling, you're running, but you're reading your target. Because your target could run through the cavity. You see the separation of the blockers. Boom. There it is. Now, sometimes, Sam, sometimes, sometimes you can pull the backside guard and that right guard doesn't have to worry about that, right? But on a fly sweep, it hits so fast, can't pull the backside guard. He'll outrun him. You know what I'm saying? 
So that's this just was one of those instances where the right guard had to handle that linebacker regardless of where he showed up. Yeah, yeah, run throughs were were a real problem uh, in this game. Thirteen especially, but they, you know, they they had Michigan a little confounded with with uh, where guys are coming from. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about that piece of it. And give them credit. I'm going to take an opportunity. They got guys, too. They had a nice plan, and uh, they worked that plan to, to damn near perfection. But there was a pivot for Michigan, right? Uh, we talk about, and we'll get to how they started running the football, attacking the edges more. But play action passing became a big factor in Michigan's success in this game. And so here we go, Al. Nine shots, Sam. Nine shots were thrown in this game. And a lot of good ones. And here's one of them. Okay. Uh, this was trap pass, which means the right guard's going to pull and trap the end. Versus cut 30, which is their front. Two robber. Now, this is a coverage they played most of during, coming into this game. And I would have anticipated seeing a little bit more of. But I think they ran it 10 times during the course of the game. All right. Trap pass versus two robber. All right. The routes. Pretty simple. You got a dagger. Dagger means inside guy post deep. Outside guy run a dig 16 yards deep. Back take the fake and slip into the far flat. Full back position block off the edge. Tight end running out to pull that safety out so he can't help on the post. Understood? All right, so those are the routes. The post is the first look or the alert, whatever you want to call them. Number two is the dig, who gets the ball more often than not. And number three is your outlet or your check down. Okay? Yep. There's your blocking scheme. The right tackle blocks the defensive end. Olu blocks the nose. The left guard blocks kind of just the B gap. Okay, whoever shows up there. Left tackle seals down in the five, and the guard pulls to sell the run. You sell initially to the defense. It's going to look a lot like a counterplay. Okay, and then as we see the reactions, you can see the linebackers. The left linebacker goes with the pulling guard. The right linebacker steps up a little bit, and the outside linebacker steps up a little bit. You get covered two on the top side of the field with a corner and the safety. And you can see number 28, that middle safety rolling down to rob that 18-yard area and add in if there's a run play, okay? That's what it looks like, okay? JJ's going to come off that fake, take a three-step drop, hitch twice beautifully, and drop this ball right in right. Roman for a touchdown. You can see it. Safety's... Poor backpedal, poor break on the ball. Roman is way too fast for him, and that's a touchdown. And I don't care what they say. That's a touchdown. Yeah, it was that a ain't a touchdown. Game. I don't know what a touchdown is. But the whole idea, Sam, was to suck the core up and isolate the safeties and coverage. This isn't even man-to-man, -man, but it, you know, it is man-to-man -man because once that robber bites, it's Roman versus who is it, 28 yeah. or uh, 26? I can't remember which guy. Both of them got beat on this day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they both did. So the whole idea is exactly what we talked about in the pregame assessment, is get them to play the run and throw the ball behind the weaker covering defenders. Their corners were good cover guys, good cover guys, but their safeties were not. And this is where you wanted to exploit, and Michigan did more than once. Yes, they did. Al, Al Borges, you know what? Uh, I kind of jumped ahead one. It's all right. Um, I jumped ahead. I, I jumped past the duo kick. Okay, let's watch let's that. Go ahead and get this duo kick in here. Okay, again, this is another example of a run through. Different spot, different spot, but same idea, okay? All right. As we watch from the end zone, this is a duo kick versus an A-gap run through, okay? Uh, with inside footwork, meaning both the left tackle and left guard, would probably want to step on the inside foot first because even though it's a duo, there is no outside threat, okay? So they're going to double to that linebacker, okay? 
normal duos, they're, they're usually using outside footwork, but because there is no outside defender, there really is no reason to step that way. Okay. The rest of it's duo. I'm not going to have, we didn't block everybody because we've done that umpteen times. But what happens here is the same thing as we get our foot down, but we don't get our eyes up. Okay. Foot, get your foot down, get at least one hand on the defender knowing that your other guy, your buddy's going to get his hand on the defender protecting the outside and you get four eyes on the linebacker. All right. But he got buried. They showed a cavity and he ran through it. Yeah. It was kind of like uh Zinner in that immediately you can see, you can see Trevor kind of, Oh shoot. Well, he, knew. Yeah, he knew. He knew. He, 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 he knew he blocked. He just got a little sloppy with his eyes and that's all that guy needed. He was looking for that cavity. As soon as he saw it, he's not blitzing here. He just saw that cavity and he took it. Boom. See, so pause a second. Bam. There he goes. Yeah, I can see it. And now it's just a matter of one step. Sam, remember you said, oh, this guy is just that little bit with the quarterback. Same thing in line. If he just doesn't bury himself too much on the block initially, he could get his right foot back down and come off and pick this guy off. But see how buried he is and how turned he is? Now, uh, turn out the lights. Yep, yeah, that was uh, that was unfortunately kind of par for the course for early in the game with how they were they were really wreaking havoc with uh, with run throughs, particularly um, in the run game, uh, kind of really blowing that up. Uh, but like I said, uh, you know, after that was when you. You saw, um, you know, you saw that, you know, that play action pass to to Roman, which was big, uh, and they began to find some some traction. Certainly, as you got into the second half of this game, Al Borges, mm-hmm. where uh, they got a lot more comfortable. They got they started to feel real good about uh, how they could attack this team, and so let's go to the counter pass, double wheel. More, more of the same here, Sam. I don't think we telestrated this one, but we don't have to because we kind of, it's kind of more of the same. Okay. In this instance, you got a double post effect rather than a dagger. So you got two dudes running to the post, one to the far hash and the other to the post. And what he does is really all that. What a nice catch too. Great job of, of giving him a chance to get that ball. So what you got now is a, Counter type action. You see that? And Loveland's actually off that going to run a little wheel. Okay. So he was a viable option too, but he didn't even need to get to that Loveland because he, they bit the run so hard and isolated that safety 26 on Ronnie that he just took that one-on-one, which Ronnie won easily. Same idea though, Sam suck up the core with gross run, run action. Make them swear to God they got to stop a run because goodness gracious, that's they've seen Michigan run so much on video. Any hard sell is going to get them coming up and isolate their lesser cover guys. And in, the, in TCU's instance, it was their safeties. Well, suck the how about more of the same, Sam? Yeah, absolutely. Suck the Sam, what if this wouldn't have worked? <laughs> well, what if Tony remember, didn't come running up there and ran back. What did yeah, the sequence? They hit him with two two edge runs, and then let's play action them off of oh, that. Oh yeah, there's no question. But there's another one. Better work. It did. Oh, it was beautiful. Beautifully set up. Beautifully thrown. Okay, flea flicker versus four week sky. What's four week sky? They're playing quarters coverage on the bunch side. You can see it there, and they're going to sky or bring that safety down on the weak side, the open side, mm-hmm. and that corner is going to. Play basically man to man on CJ. Okay, we go to that. Same idea. We gotta get him to come up and bite. So we're gonna sell the hell out of the duo play, Sam. We're gonna sell the hell out of it. Well, you can see Keegan and, and Hayes are gonna double that three hard, and and Zenter and Olu are gonna double that nose guard who's shaded, and then Honeford and and Barnard are gonna double that five. Okay. Now uh, Ronnie is gonna run right at that safety like he's gonna block him. And then just a little hesitation until he feels him bite, because that's the key. You can't take off until you feel him bite. And he didn't have to bite much, just a little bit. And he blows right by him. Backside, CJ just runs a corner to get that guy out of there so he can't help on the post. And then Loveland, he blocks that walked-up safety on him. Okay, I think that's 26. 
He blocks him for a couple counts and trickles into the flat just in case they don't bite on the post. Okay? Now, there's the handoff to Donovan, who runs a couple steps into the line of scrimmage and turns and pitches it back to J.J., who sees if the post is open. Okay? There's your reactions. The Mike linebacker kind of scrapes, and Honeford has to pick him up. The safety takes a couple steps forward as Ronnie passes right by him. The corner takes a couple steps forward, playing the run all the way, and the back two defenders are basically just occupied by C.J. There's where the ball goes. As soon as, as, as Donovan hands the ball off, he turns and he should be a general protector for anybody who shook loose. And you can see he did it there. As soon as he pitches that ball back to quarterback, he may be the guy that picks a dude off at the last second and allows J.J. to make that throw. Yeah, they were, boy, they were running by these guys left and right out. <laughs> they by. No they question. They run so hard. This was the counter to that, right? This they, was the counter to it, and that, and and that's the deal. See, Sam, if 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 wishes were horses, we'd all take a ride, right? But eliminate the the the, the uh, turnovers, which you can't do. They happen, and they are what they are. But they probably may have rushed for less yards. But these plays would have won them the game. These plays would have won them the game and filled the void for the less rushing yardage had not all the other stuff stopped, uh, happened. So, like I say, it's, uh, that's not reality, but right. that is that is probably accurate. Well, uh, you know, so you're, you're kind of on a roll there throwing the football. Uh, and then comes another, unfortunately for Michigan, another pick six in this game, Coach Boyd. Yeah, another play I know he'll grow from because I think this is uh, this is one easy, an easy fix for the future. I doubt you'll ever see him do this again. Um, but all this is is a uh, kind of a follow type pattern. We used to call it chase, um, and all it is is this: a drive follow. I call it drive route by the eighty-eight. He comes underneath on a shallow, and then Colston goes out and follows in behind him while Ronnie Bell pushes up the field about 10 to 12 yards and breaks for the corner. Again, they have drawn man coverage, Sam. Okay, there's your routes. There's your routes. You see how that is? Those are the three primary read guys. He's probably reading it one to the shallow, two to the corner, and three to Colston. Okay? I don't know that for a fact. You could read this a couple different ways. But that there, okay. Initially now, they're playing man-to-man with a free safety in the middle, and they're playing the court. The middle linebacker is spying the quarterback scramble. That means he's going to be checking JJ to make sure JJ doesn't take off. They're well aware of his mobility, so they're assigning one player to him. The weak outside backer is covering Donovan man to man. Now, what's the other guy doing? The other guy is the rat player. What's the rat? The rat player is the dude that just focuses on the quarterback's aerial. Okay, he's going to drop and take a little drop, a little drop, and just watch where JJ's looking now he's going to intercept this ball but not that he stared down is of secondary the secondary reason okay he stared it down showed him what it was all that and that's what a lot of people get but really the mistake on this is more the read this is man coverage and this ball should have gone to the corner there should have never been a stare down because the ball should have gone to the corner but as you see it there the quarterback or the uh, linebacker kind of settles a little and then jumps right in front of where his eyes are looking, and he ends up playing catch with a linebacker. So uh, that's really it. But it's more of a read issue initially anyway. You can see the separation on that view that Ronnie Bell has. That was probably more locking into Colston than it is staring down the receiver. Although staring down is a factor. I will not minimize that. But you can see the whole picture is telling you right here, throw that ball to the corner. Yeah. Now, you got to remember how quarterbacks think, too, in fairness. I was talking to Devin about this, and he brought up a good point. He's had so much success with Colston. He has gained that Luke Schumacher confidence in Colston that he has, you know. So – 
he sees him, him as a guy that can fill that that void after losing Luke. And he's thinking, I'm going to hit this kid because he's taking some balls away from guys and such. But this was just an instance where he probably overdid it. He probably uh, locked in a little too much. And he just simply did not see the right player, which, you know, that is a learning experience for every quarterback. He isn't the first guy to do this, and he will not be the last. But credit to him. The young, the, the young fella came back, Al. He, he, yeah, he, he did. From it. Yeah, because he's a competitor. He's going to make some mistakes. He knows he's going to make some mistakes. And to be honest with you, as young as he is, he's made very few in, until this game. So he knows now, okay, we still win this sucker. And look what he's doing. Right back in stride. Right back in stride. I love this play. I didn't telestrate this. Watch Ronnie. That, does that move look familiar, Sam? Does that move look familiar? It's familiar, Al. That's the one that CJ put on that Ohio State guy. I called it a bolt route where the old PCP post, corner, post. He shook four big time. JJ put it right on the money. They did a great job of scheming us. Freeze that just a second, Sam, if you would. Can you pause that? Is they took, uh, and again, we need to illustrate this, but Oops, they sorry. took Donovan. They took Donovan and they put him outside of Ronnie. And that drew corner coverage, who are their better cover guys, right? And then Ronnie drew safety coverage. So now you got the corner covering Donovan on the on the on the little pullout route. And you got the safety covering your wide receiver on the double move. That's good scheming there. Great scheming. Middle of the field was open because they were in a three-by-one coverage. And they took advantage of it. That's a beautiful, beautifully executed and great timing on that call. Yeah, I got to give him credit for being a – I mean, you talk about earlier in the show what a, a pick six can do to a team. What a pick six can do to a quarterback. Two of them now? Oh, yeah. In a game of this magnitude, I mean, the, the mental toughness. He was a stud, though, Sam. That. He was a stud. He kept competing. A lot of guys going to tank, he didn't. He kept competing and got him back in the game. I was, I was proud of him. I thought he did a, a really nice job when you consider the circumstances of the game, the way the game flow went, particularly early. Yeah, you got to give him a ton of credit for, like you said, intestinal fortitude. Showing his teammates, hey, I got y'all. We're going to come back in this thing. And and the coaches, they, uh, again, whereas, you know, you saw the players kind of find their stride offensively a bit better in the second half, coaches were, were scheming them up. You just talk about how they schemed Ronnie open, schemed a great matchup for Ronnie. Uh, they're attacking the edge in different ways, including mm -hmm. with this slot reverse, Al. Oh, God, I like this one a lot. This is a cool play. This is the old slot reverse play. I've seen this one this year, but you can see it there. That gives you, but we're going to show it to you on the telestration from the end zone view because we had a great shot to draw these X's and O's. Okay, slot reverse versus zero rat. They're playing zero without a blitz, and they're bringing the, the safety down to help play the run. Boy, these guys, they wouldn't stop that run, Sam. They were those, the schemes were all geared to stop the run, okay? What we did on this now is everybody blocked basically to the left, okay? Uh, you can see uh, Keegan and, and Hayes double team into 57. Olu's hooking that nose guard, and Barnhart and Zenter are doubling to the inside linebacker. They are leaving the middle linebacker free because they're going to do a little pump fake to pull him out. You'll see that in just a second. But that is initially how the scheme looks, okay? Now, Loveland will come around and block that alley player. He'll block that alley player and be the personal escort for Roman on the reverse. Okay. Initially, it looks almost like a little split zone. Uh, Donovan goes in short motion and then swings out of the backfield and simulates catching the ball so he gets everybody's attention on him. They're trying to pull the defense to the left so they can run the reverse with an escort to the right. Now, First thing you'll do, see is you'll see uh, J.J. will hand the ball first to Roman and then make a big demonstrative pump fake. There you see it, to, uh, to Donovan. And it gets a lot of people's attention. 
So that almost at the same time, they're all walled off. Oh, that is just gorgeous. Great job by CJ. Got to, didn't finish it, but he got it back far, far enough where uh, Roman could dive over the top. Great competitive finish to this run by Roman Wilson, too. I love it. There's a guy that's still, still believing they're going to win this game. Still playing. Still playing. Still playing. I was excited to see he, you know, he had a he had a good game. This kid, yeah, man, and he, he hurt his shoulder in this game. You wouldn't know yeah, it. Yeah, boy, I tell you what, though, he just he showed he is a big play guy. And yeah. I always believe he's a big play. He went through some injury situations, and I don't think I think his best football is ahead of him, Sam. I really do. Uh, you're going to see more of that kid, and he's going to be an even more prominent figure in our offense. Yeah, can you imagine, you know, him catching the targets? And, and routes that Ronnie caught this year. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Ronnie's a really good player and a fiery leader, but Rome's a more explosive player. And you just feel like him getting some of those looks next year has uh, more big play potential for this offense written all over it. Yeah, and when you consider the quarterback's going to be a year, a year better, you're more aware, you're more accurate, everything's going to be a year better. And, and that's going to be... That bodes very well for Roman in, in the position he plays. Yeah, Al, I think we, you know, we hit on, we hit on almost everything in the game. We could have brought out the quarterback counter uh, in this uh, in this contest, right? Uh, that was I thought big. They had a two point conversion on a QB counter. Had a touchdown run on a QB counter. Uh, that was a that was a big play, and it it brings about something we kind of talked about in the breakdown. J.J. as a runner, they got to it in the second half of this game. Uh, it was a real weapon, and you wonder, you know, you're going to see the quarterback and them be more comfortable with him throwing it, play action passing. I think it'll be a staple throughout the year. One of the big questions will be, how much do you run him? Well, that's what I said how much do you run him? when we went back over the game. It's, it, when you're the coordinator and you're putting the offense together, that's and you have a mobile quarterback. Assuming you have a mobile quarterback, because some, some guys don't, you know, some guys aren't as mobile, but assuming you have a guy that has at least some dual threat to him, which in today's college football is, is uh, very much in vogue. You have to make a decision how, when the, when the, when they put the box score up at the end of the game, how many carries is he going to have? What is your optimal number? Okay. And if your optimal number is eight to 10, then gear your offense to that. You know what I mean? If you've got a dynamic runner like Denard Robinson, your optimal number may be in the 20s, right? But uh, that's what you have to decide. If you don't want him to carry the ball but four or five times a game, you can make that happen easily enough. You can't. But uh, if he is a guy that you want to truly be a threat to the defense, not only when he hands the ball off, but just the threat of him pulling the ball, separating defenders and making less tacklers on the ball. How often do you want to do that stuff, knowing that he may be pulling that ball some, you know? And uh, uh, so that that is, that's a challenge. Uh, it's, it's a nice challenge. It's, it's good to know if, if a kid can move, but uh, can run like that. But you just have to devise a plan that's like that. I just know this. I know, and I mentioned this before, is as the season went on towards the end, that number grew for me. Mm-hmm. I had quarterbacks that we didn't run at all during the season. Very, very little. This was before spread offense was in vogue. But later in the season, we would get to the big games. I would design a bluff run back in 2004. We put in a bluff run for Jason Campbell. We Nobody had ever run that play before. We put in a, a zone read. You know, We put in a quarterback draw, which I had not called in 11 games. So – as it draws closer to the end of the season, you're a little more indiscriminate about allowing him to carry the ball more. But if you hurt, get him hurt early in the year, yeah, that can be painful. Okay. Yeah, man, it's gonna be, it is gonna be really interesting to see uh, what that balance looks like. What that balance looks like for them moving forward uh, next year. So uh, it's been a great look. Let's. Let's take a breath. It was a tough way to end the season, right? It was a tough game to break down. We got spoiled breaking down wins, right? We got spoiled breaking down wins. Got to thank the got to thank the team for that. Uh, thank yeah. these players for it, it was a pleasure 
breaking down what they do. It was a pleasure breaking down, uh, you know, the intricacies of their run scheme. Uh, he's, we talk a lot about, you know, this was, you know, this was a, a game where TCU got the better of them on, uh, in in many respects, uh, on the field, uh, tactically at times. But that was the exception to the rule. Uh, they they pounded teams, they schemed teams, uh, they beat teams, they beat Ohio State, they won another Big Ten championship. This was a great year. Again, it's sucky end aside, you know, definitely a game they could have won, should have won. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't a great year. It was another great year for for Michigan, a great year for these players, for these coaches, one to be proud of and look back with, with great fondness and, and uh, enjoy. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. It made our job so much fun because there were so many cool things to telestrate and explain and such. But, you know, Sam, it gets harder to feed the monster. You know, uh, uh, you win a Big Ten championship last year. You win another one this year. The expectations grow. You have an incredible – see, 13-0, and 0, Sam. When do you go 13-0? and 0? I did it once in my entire career, okay? You just don't do that. And then you lose the last game, and it kind of puts the fire out a little bit. It really should because the as much as you'd like to play for it all and maybe another game – better time you'd have won the game but you didn't but you can't dismiss the accomplishments of these kids they were incredible they had they got ahead and bomb teams and they had to come back in some games mm -hmm. they were tough and the best team i've ever seen second half i mean unbelievable what they accomplished them and the coaches so don't lose sight of of what was accomplished even though right now it may seem a little tainted it was incredible and i i just I could be wrong, but I think there's more good ahead with this kid continuing to play quarterback with some of the holes that I know they'll fill. And with the kids that are coming back, this team will be right back where they were and they're going to get over the hump. They're going to get over the hump. You just, just got to put that effort together. That, that key game. Gotcha. Well, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Like I said, this is not the last time you're going to see out gorgeous. We got some things we're going to do in the off season. Uh, definitely going to be doing something around the spring game. Uh, so this isn't the last that you'll see uh, from the, the key breaking things down. Trust me, folks. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. Hope that you enjoyed everything that we do. If you did, please be sure to like this video. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel. That is the way you show love. That is the way you keep us going and growing. Uh, but the best way to show love is go over to MichiganInsider.com. Sam needs love. Sam needs love. No question. No yeah. question. One dollar. Yeah. I don't love him, so somebody got to love him. Hey, listen. Hey, look. You know, this this, this Jim Harbaugh coaching rumor mill saga, Al knows, hey, man, we, we dig deep. We oh. dig deep and talk to impeccable sources. Impeccable yeah. sources oh. about what's going on there, right? Oh, Sam, there is so much happy horse shit out there when this time of year is unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah. But you know what, Sam? I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I can't believe I'm saying this. But I'm actually going to miss Mondays with you, grinding it out, <laughs> watching the video until you're half asleep. Sam, wake up. Sam, wake up. <laughs> you're nodding off over the computer. Sam, we got we got to do two more <laughs> telestrations. Oh, you look back hey. at me with big alligator tears. <laughs> Mama wants me what home. I go, no, Sam, Sam, we're not done yet. An hour would look. <laughs> I would do this. <laughs> I'd do that. I'd be like, you okay? <laughs> Sam, you are soft and mentally weak. We got more work to do. <laughs> you, you okay? Hey, man, I got to be up at the butt crack of dawn every morning. So by the time. Oh, crying your I'm river. Don't, like, don't tell me the pain. Show me the baby. I don't want to hear about it, Sam. I find myself nodding off. The board toward the end of the year. Like, I'm like, hey, 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 you okay? You all right over there, Sam? Oh, uh, unbelievable. You guys can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do uh, it. Hey, we grind it out for you, the people. I don't look the, the amount of time that we put into this. And I, I want to commend Al, Vance, who you're about to hear from, Devin. Like, this isn't just, you know, something they're throwing token time at. They're really, really putting in the, in the time. And to the point where they're telling me. Hey, I want to break down this play. I want to break down that play. Hey, give me this game. 
I want to, hey, I need six games, Sam. Hey, I want to watch the whole season, Sam. Hey, I want to telestrate TCU, Sam. <laughs> like, ow, you want to you telestrate TCU? <laughs> so, if you want the information or you don't. I mean, if you yeah, don't want it, hey, my good. point is, my point is, the time is being put forth for you, the people, hours and hours and hours. We're getting out of here late at night on Mondays and grinding it out for multiple sessions on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and, and Thursdays to, to bring you the best, to make sure that when you walk to the water cooler, or you go to, you know, you go to work, wherever you are, you're talking it over at the games with other Michigan fans, you know more than them. I guarantee you, you watch us. You know more than anyone you're you're talking to. Wouldn't you say that, Al? Nobody does it better. How about that one, Sam? Huh? <laughs> so I got I got a hidden talent, but but this no place does it better, Sam. No yeah. place does it better. So we promise you, it's gonna keep getting better too. So stick with us again. Subscribe to the channel, like the videos, check us out over the MichiganInsider.com. That's where you can really keep it going all year round with the football basketball and recruiting analysis is inside intel got an update coming up on the hardball rumor mill a little bit later on today on the michiganinsider.com so be sure to check that out as well and remember hey copyright owners we tell everyone we don't own this footage don't own it. it is not ours not ours we do not monetize it never would we don't get sponsorship for it sponsorships forget about it we just use it for the entertainment Education and edification. Edification. That's the word to get. That's a good. That's a good word, Sam. That's a good word. We love to edify. Absolutely, folks. Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you next time on the next edition of the Michigan Football Film Study, focused on the offense with Al Borges. Go blue.